Hey everyone! Today we're going to be doing the first video of what I hope will become a series. As a way to sort of honor those in Moon Clan who are now a part of Star Clan, I thought it could be really nice to share all of your head cannons for that cat while I draw a sort of reference sheet for them. So I guess I'll go ahead and start with. Well, I guess these are my head cannons. <laughs> I know that technically Moon Clan is mine, but I really want you guys to be able to use their story to help stretch your creative muscles. If you have ideas about her backstory that differs wildly from mine, that is perfectly fine. I have seen so many really interesting ideas out there that I could never um, even put together myself. And that's something that I really want to encourage. I will forever hold this ideology. All Moon Clan headcanons are valid as long as they aren't harmful. And yes, I do want to hear all of them. Um, it's a little difficult now to keep up with everyone's comments, which is honestly mind-blowing to me, and I'm still like really processing it. But I promise you guys I read each and every single one of them, and I will absolutely continue to do so. Anyway, enough of my rambling. Let's get into the actual headcanons here. So Thunderspot originally hailed from Pine Clan. She was the second oldest out of a litter of four. Her father, Hawkstar, was the leader, and her mother, Bramblestorm, was a warrior that all of Pine Clan looked up to. From birth, Thunderspot and her litter mates were expected to be perfect and continue their parents' legacy in leading Pine Clan. This left a sort of rift between the siblings who were constantly undermining each other's efforts, always seeking to gain the favor of their father. Thunderspot did her best to keep them proud of her, but she was never as power hungry as her brothers and sister were, and she kind of tried to keep from getting caught up in their games. The day that she met Marshstar, Marshdrop at the time, was the day that followed the worst night of her life, the night that Thunderspot had lost all of her family except for her brother, Stagheart. Her sleep was restless that night. In her dreams, she was surrounded by moons, full, waxing, waning, every phase constantly shifting. Her litter mates watched from the shadows, their golden eyes following her every move. Dissonant whispers meant to wound grew louder and louder until even her own screams could not be heard above them. And then there was silence. The intense stares of her siblings were gone. The moons had stopped multiplying, had stopped spinning around her. All that stood before her was a clearing. Nothing special, just a worn down trail surrounded by trees and grass. Only one thing stood out to her. Whatever it was, it was radiating a beautiful yellow glow, entrancing her. She had never seen it before, and a voice she had never heard before was telling her to find it, to go there, and she would find where she needed to be. Thunderspot couldn't remember what had woken her that night. But what she had seen when she stepped down into the moonlight had caused her blood to run cold. Stagheart, drenched in crimson, sat atop the fallen tree where their father had once given orders from. She fought tooth and claw to drag him off of it, and when she succeeded, he knocked her to the ground and gave her a single ultimatum. You see, Stagheart had always liked her. She had never fought to take his rightful title from him. She knew where she belonged at the bottom of the clan. If she left, he would spare her from joining Star Clan with the rest of their family. Thunderspot had wanted to fight him, to stop him even if it was too late. He would never be a leader fit for Pine Clan. He would endanger all of them and when they learned what he had done, they'd never be able to trust him. But she knew he would keep his word if she didn't leave, and the memory of her dream was still fresh in her mind. She agreed to his conditions and left. When Marshstar offered the role of deputy to her, Thunderspot had almost refused. That sort of power? That power had led her brother down a dark path, and it was not something she wanted to take any part in. She wouldn't have taken it. But they were a new clan, only a few days old. All of them carried scars, both old and new. But there was a hope that shone as bright as her dream that night. She couldn't let them down. Even if she had known what it would cost her in the end, Thunderspot could never see a future where she had not served as deputy to Moon Clan. But what did happen in the end? How in the world had Thunderspot ended up in Star Clan? We were told it was an accident, but is that really all it was? 
a lot of you, like me, don't seem to think so. In fact, most of us seem to be in agreement that while there may have been two or possibly even three suspects, it's almost certain that someone was behind Thunderspot's untimely death. I personally believe there is one cat who absolutely had a paw on it. My arch nemesis, Squirrel Fur. For legal reasons, that was a joke. Please don't come for me, Squirrel Fur stands. Both Millie Mouse and Jules production share a very similar idea to myself, believing that Squirrel Fur, with the possibility of pound spur as an accomplice, lured Thunderspot directly into the lion's den. Well, I guess the fox's den? <laughs> or maybe that was just an excuse. Maybe they were the real killers all along. Stan eats crayons, amazing username by the way, thinks things went down just a little differently. They believe that Pouncebur was the sole culprit and, using the guise of wanting to bury the hatchet between them, lured Thunderspot, whose guard was down, to a spot where he knew a fox would be. It would be the perfect crime. No one would be any wiser to his schemes, to his act of murder. It would be nothing more than a tragedy, nothing more than one more step taken towards his goal of becoming deputy. B8467 thinks that there wasn't even a fox involved at all. In fact, it really was an accident, but not one that Squirrel Fur and Pounce Fur would feel any remorse for. <laughs> they think that there was an argument that broke out near a thunder path, and it led to Thunderspot being hit by a monster. That was also when Marsh Star, wanting to save her, almost lost one of his lives. Now, Rebel isn't suspecting Squirrel Fur or Pounce Fur. Well, mostly. They think there's a cat in the clan we're all looking over. One of Thunderspot's will they, won't they bows. That's right. Wetshine. Just kidding, Wetshine can do absolutely no wrong in Rebel's eyes. No, they think it was Rebel Skip whose paws are dirty with Thunderspot's death. Rebel Skip confessed to Thunderspot, and when their feelings weren't reciprocated, they killed her in a crime of passion. But could Rebel Skip really do such a thing? Catherine thinks that Rebel Skip might be feeling guilty, but only because they could have protected Thunderspot if they hadn't fought only a little bit beforehand. It's no secret that Rebel Skip was upset with Thunderspot, and they think that it was all because of a misunderstanding. The Rebel Skip assumed Thunderspot's mistrust of Squirrel Fur was because he was a loner, just like they had been. In the end, we'll never know. Except for, not a suspicious character, that sounds very suspicious to me, you guys, over on our Discord server, who traced all the Squirrel Fur's steps and found the actual truth. I'm just... I'll just leave this here for you guys <laughs> and you can just pause to read it and I would absolutely recommend doing that. It's very well thought out and written. Honestly, it very well may be the closest we get. Onto some lighter head cannons. We have a lot of these thankfully. So Flappy Caddo has two they'd like to share with you guys. A very simple one that Thunderspot's favorite prey was rat. Hey, if that's true, then maybe Squirrel Fur was just terrified that she would eat him. Yes, I do have an issue with this man. They also believe that Skyleg, the mysterious cat who has been guiding Moon Clan to Star Clan, may in fact be Thunderspot's ancestor. Speaking of Star Clan, Nas and Rebel actually made a headcanon about what exactly Thunderspot is doing with her time in the afterlife. Now that she has so much on her paws, maybe she's taken to collecting things to distract her? Plants, flowers, Rebel, the wet shine lover that they are, thinks that personally, Thunderspot has a weakness for collecting the shiny rocks they find by Starclan's rivers and lakes, because they remind her of him. Speaking of wet shine, Rebel also thinks that if Thunderspot had lived longer, that she and Wetshine would have become mates and even had a litter or two of kids together, and their names would be weather-related. And what if Thunderspot and Hollystock could have raised their kids together? And speaking of Hollystock's kit, there's a few headcanons about Thunderspot's possible connection to Milk Kit. Maybe Thunderspot and Prickleflower are watching over him, giving him all of their blessings and doing their best to offer him guidance. Or what if, just maybe, Milk Kit is actually a reincarnation of one of them? Wow, what a lot of amazing ideas, you guys. 
Um, if I butchered any of your usernames, I sincerely apologize. <laughs> But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I I really miss Thunderspot, you guys. But I'm really glad I got the chance to share her story with you. I'm so, it's so amazing to see how invested you guys all are in her um, and in the story in general in, in Moon Clan. I know a lot of you guys have favorites that you are so attached to and that makes me so happy. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't hope I mean, yeah, I don't hope that um, I get to do this again soon, <laughs> but I kind of do. Um, but yeah, I guess Prickle Flower will probably be next. I don't know when her video will be out, um, but it will be in the works soon. Okay, you guys. Bye. <laughs>